Hi guys, in today's micro lecture, we're going to talk about access and egress. So getting in and getting out. Now getting in and getting out of the situation that you're, that you're currently in is one of the most important parts of paramedic practice. The reason being is because the thing that makes paramedicine so unique is that we're working outside of a nice, safe, traditional hospital setting. And the idea is that we as practitioners go out to the patient, we bring the care to the patient, we package them up, we take them into the hospital. So the reason it's, um, it's fraught with challenges is because it's unpredictable. And one of the things that's unpredictable is the nature of getting in and getting out to your patients. Now, in the workshop, you will be taught lots of different things about access and egress. You'll be given a chance to practice with bits of equipment, rescue boards, scoop stretchers, striker chairs and stretchers. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about access and egress. Now, we're going to take the typical example of a private dwelling. Now, straight away, looking at this address, you can see that you've got a grass patch here and you've got some kind of path leading up to the front door. But you can also see that the, the door's pretty narrow and the, paving, the path itself is, looks like it's made up of stones. So when you're walking into this address, you need to be mindfully thinking, how are we going to get out if we need to? Are we going to be using the carry chair? Are we going to be using the stretcher? Where are we going to position the carry chair and stretch? Are we going to put it here and get the patient to walk? Or are we going to put it here and get the patient to walk? Do we take them in? Is there a better way of using the space around here? For example, does this back gate open? And we can then get the ambulance closer to the, to the back of the house. So on this occasion, access and egress is not massively problematic, but it's not the best because the ambulance chairs and stretchers, of course, have wheels on. So let's take a look at um, this image here. So now we're comparing the two. So here you immediately see um, a, a, a basically a no-go area for anything with wheels because it's muddy um, and it's messy. So what you're gonna need to be thinking of is, well, how am I gonna get my patient out of that? Now the choices that you have include the rescue board, scoop stretcher. You can even walk the patient depending on what the situation is. And sometimes there's no choice, you do have to walk the patient. And of course, you, you would always be thinking, can I get the ambulance closer to the situation without you know, bogging it down? You know, can this take the weight of the ambulance? Because again, access and egress uh, really does make your life easy or difficult depending on the situation and how well you work with your crewmate to make decisions. Um, and of course, there are gonna be occasions when we are not going to private addresses. You're going to be going to industrial areas. You're going to be working from heights. You're going to be going into unit blocks with no lifts. So all of these things are considerations for access and egress. Now, work, when you're also thinking access and egress, you also need to be thinking safety to yourself and to your patient. And when we say safety, we're not just talking about people who've been taking drugs and other hazards on scene. We're also talking about manual handling errors as well. Okay, guys, uh, that's the micro lecture on access and egress. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for your attention. Cheers, guys.